Uh, so the Interloper trilogy was structured as a as if it was one book in three parts uh, because I had never written a trilogy before and I didn't really know how to. I knew that the middle part was going to be really difficult. The middle of a trilogy is where stories tend to sag and slow down and get bogged down. Uh, luckily, I've received a lot of feedback about the second book recently that has, has been incredible to hear. So I'm confident it doesn't sag in the middle, but I had to plan it out so that, so I started with the ending really, like I had to figure out, here's what I've got in mind for the story. Here's where I want it to end. Here's the catharsis and the the experience that I want to deliver at the end of it. How do we get there? And then once I had the overarching story, I was like, cool, right now, where's the three books in, <laughs> in this? And then I had to find where the stories stopped and started, uh, the initial story arc of Icebreaker, the the midline that the hundred question draws through everything and then the big finale that everything builds up to and under the oak. Uh, and then because I didn't know, because I'd never written a trilogy before, I just wrote it like one big book so that it would all make sense the whole way through. So there's really no, there's not much in the way of time skips or anything. I think like Icebreaker takes place over like a week. So I charted down like what happened day to day in Icebreaker, that was fine. And then once you got into the, the bigger parts of the rest of the story, uh, I started finding that other stories were appearing out of the blue in it. And I was, all oh, right, we should we should detour and do this and we should do that. So it was it was a bit like gardening, really. You know, it, it was uh, <laughs> it's like deciding what to trim, what offshoots to let grow. And and at the end of it, I had something approximating a story and it took a long time. Once I started writing it, I would have another idea. I'd be like, oh, this is a great idea, but I need to change everything across three books to put it in. So it was a lot of going back and editing things so that the future books would make sense. Uh, but otherwise I wrote them, I wrote them to plan, like I planned it out. And then once I had the plan, I found that I was pantsing a lot of it anyway. <laughs> so I think uh, a good mixture between the two is essential for any good writer. You know, you need to, you need to learn how to plan, but you also need to learn how to just, just be there in the moment and make it up as you go. And a lot of the time, that's some of the best stuff that you'll write. And so from this morning, I think you, you sent out a tweet and this tweet was some writing advice for some aspiring oh, yeah, authors. Yeah. And I think that if, you know, if a quarter of the, of the writers out there, if they put in just half of this advice, I think it would greatly improve their writing. Would you like, would you, would you like to talk about that and, and how you came to these yeah. conclusions? And so I don't know if you saw the big thing that I done on Twitter a while back where like, I don't do many things that blow up on Twitter. I am, I am not social media savvy, uh, but I posted, I had about 300 self-published books on my to be read list. And I went through them live, didn't mention any names uh, unless I really liked. So I'd read the first chapter of all of them uh, and I would do it live. And I would say either, I'm not going to keep reading this and here's why anonymously, or here's the name of the book and I've tagged the writer and this is fantastic. I'll put this on my TBR. I'll read it later. Something like 90% of the books got cut that way. So I went from about 300 to about 30. Uh, and that's what I'm currently working my way through. And they've all broadly all been fantastic so far, uh, varying degrees of like editing quality and stuff, but the actual stories themselves have been fantastic. So the writing advice that I put up today was based off what I keep seeing authors miss, what I think they could, like a lot of self-published writers especially, uh, could probably do with hearing. It's the same things that an editor would tell you. Uh, or an editor, sorry, would tell you, uh, which is to, you know, cut your word count, say more with less. You don't need to go into details. A lot of what you write is just meaningless rambling. If it doesn't advance the story, if it doesn't advance the scene, if it doesn't develop character, it doesn't develop action, it should probably be on the cutting room floor. So it's, uh, it's really just, uh, there's lots more to editing than that, obviously. But it's like the best advice that I've heard from editors condensed down into like three or four tweets. I love Excuse that. Me. Oh man, you know, I, I you know, I love the background of where this advice came from. It came from this experiment that that you set up, you know, and you're actually in the trenches. You're reading these other authors' works, <laughs> yeah. and you were able to make these, you know, these deductions. And you know, mm -hmm. I find that so fascinating and cool. And um, you, you, yeah, you know, especially the, the the descriptors. I think I think that's something where a lot of writers will kind of lose me and. And as a reader, you know, reader fatigue is a real thing. And if the writing yeah. isn't elegant, you know, it, you know, it, it can almost become a bit of a math problem or like you're just kind of going through yeah. line by line 
And pretty soon you just kind of get tired of reading. I mean, you, you Skip know, to you the end. The yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, I'll be invested in the story.